this this is Tara from Chaley's Couture Quilting and today I'm going to show you how to straighten your canvases on your or your leaders. So I have a, a PQS Lucy on a deluxe table and my leaders are the canvas type. What you're going to need to do this is a ruler base. Of course all your thread, get your needle into your machine. I use these little clips from Amazon, very cheap binding clips, something to put your thread tears in, and then a lint brush. This is, you would only really need this if you've got like strings or it looks kind of messy or something. Um, and if you're watching this, more likely you've never made like a, a straight edge on your canvas. So mine previously were stitched with a nice straight edge, but now it's time um, to make a new one. And I've done it a couple times before, owning my Lucy. So I've taken out all the old stitch lines and I'm going to um, really get all the thread things, thread tears out of here because if you have a computerized system, you don't want little pieces getting stuck in your belts or your motor area. So I'm gonna really use that. Um, lint brush to to go through it all. I also have an eye steam handheld steamer. It's been beat up. Dropped a lot, but it's pretty pretty nice. I got this on Amazon. I think they still sell it. You might want to check if you're interested. I use this to steam my quilts and I use it to kind of I'm going to use it to steam my canvases shortly. So, um I'm going to go ahead now and use my lint brush, trying to, trying to clean up my leaders a little bit. Um, I'll be right back. So I did this on the front of my canvas for the back, for my backing. And I'm going to go back over there. I'm going to take out the this old one that I have here. It's time to, if you can tell, you can see now that my back, le this leader here is up more. And my back leader is like stretched back there. And I really like to have straight leaders when I do my quilts. So I'm going to be doing that. And it shouldn't take too long. The longest part for me right now is that I have to clean up the thread tails. If this is new for you, you don't have to worry about that process. So I'm going to steam. All the way across. Steam the line. with my, and this is just to get rid of the canvas line I made previously. But this is a good video that once you learn how to do this and you have to come back and, and try it again the, after a few years, um, you'll know what I did to, to take away my old ones to get the new ones in. So. I'm going to do that. I'll, I'll flip it down and, sorry, sorry guys. I'll do this several times until I get it ironed out. So I'm going to be working on that. But it, pretty, it works pretty well. Okay. Okay. So I steamed them. Um, I'm going to let them dry a little bit because it still has that steam dampness going on. While that dries, I'm going to go over there and pick out this um, straight edge that I made a while back. And then I'll do the same thing I did. I'll clean it up. I'll take my lint brush, get all the little threads out, and then um, I'll be ready for the steaming again. I'll let it dry. Once I feel like they're, they're going kind to of dry pretty fast because it wasn't really drenched or anything, then I'll do the next step with you. So bear with me a moment. Okay, so I finished my back leaders and now I'm ready to use my ruler base and my clips and I'm going to find the edge I started on the far right and I'm going to clip all the way across. Of course it's going to, you can keep them kind of loose right now but as soon as you're done clipping them you're going to want to make sure that it's nice and tight um, after you do that. So I want to clip all the way across just like 
get the edges and pinch and go all the way across. So I scoot along with my ruler base so it can give me some leverage. And I just kind of pinch them together like that and then I clip it. Of course it's easier to do it without me holding the camera right now, but I just kind of then I edge along with my ruler base and just kind of go all the way across. Okay. And I have it kind of loose right now so that I can pinch. You don't want it too tight where you can't pinch it because then you know just hurt your hands. And then just basically trying to go all the way across and connect them. And um, I do recommend that you get it threaded first because otherwise you'll be crawling. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter, I guess, but I, I like to get it threaded first. Just have everything ready to go. And I'm using a, a nice color I can see, a hot pink color this time. I've used blue before and I've used uh, some lime yellow. But now, this, this time around, I'm going to be using the pink, hot pink. All right, so I'm going to continue going all the way across before I tell you about the next step. So as I got to my middle where my centers were, it looks like my blue is not centered anymore. But look, it look but I'm back to where I used to be at one point in my centers because now my black my blacks are aligned again. That was from the factory, the center there. So um, I'm back to the middle um, for my leader. And I'm just going to have to get rid of these. This is um, water base, water soluble. So I can just dab some water on that shortly. Um, and to get that out, because I'm going to remark. If you were way off, you would just remark. You just find the center for both of these leaders. Make sure they're, get the same spot and mark it. It doesn't have to be precise, but as long as this leader here and this leader here is marked correctly, kind of like the way those black ones are right now that's going to be your new center point and i'll double check it after we uh, make our casing so so far it looks pretty good and i know i'm going to kind of focus on that and then get rid of this other stuff here okay I have everything clipped and i've adjusted some a little bit if i see like a big ripple or something here i try to find a sweet spot because not all the leaders were cut too precise so you might have a little bit overage over here so you just have to find that nice spot make sure everything and you're gonna have some sag but that we're gonna help fix that by having a straight straight um leader because that's why it's sagging right now so i took away my center markings i can remark them later um once i'm done i've got my hot pink thread ready to go so i'm just gonna find a spot where I want to set my channel lock on my machine and go from there and so when you have that roller base it kind of straightens everything out when you go to the edge I've also clipped my sides with my clamps so you want to make sure you do that too to give you some keep it straight so I'm looking at my leader see where I'm gonna make my new edge fold over okay i think i might do it right in the middle of these two all right just hold on for one second i have set my channel locks brought up my thread i'm gonna lock it in okay and then i'm going to take it and go all the way down to the edge I'm going to do this all the way to the edge. My channel locks are on. Making a stitch line. So you can see it over here. Okay, I'm just going to pop. Okay, I did my first fold line for this back leader. Now I'm getting ready to stitch along for my uh, front of my back leader. And I'm going to make the same line, set the channel lock, and I'm going to sew all the way across. Okay, I have my roller base on, and you want to back stitch before and at the end as you do this. Okay. 
Okay, it's gonna go all, go all the way across. One thing to note is if you get to the end and there's a lot of sag, um, when you're doing your line across, especially on this front of the back leader, just give it a good, just make it straight, you're kind of like pull it straight and then it will take off that excess that's causing it to sag so that you can get that nice straight line. So you will have a fold over a little bit more fabric from the canvas on the, on the edge, but it will still give you a straight line because you do want it kind of flush when you do your line. Um, what you do now is you're going to go and fold at that stitch line. So I've got my hot pink that you can see here and that's going to be when you fold it it's going to be right there in the middle of that crease and I'm just going over and folding it using my table for leverage going all the way across, clipping again, leaving this back one alone for now. And I'm gonna just keep folding it, making sure I get it right on that stitch. And I'm not making a casing for red snappers. That's a different type of tutorial because you need to have spacing in between this. This is just to straighten your leaders if you're a pinner, like I am. So if you are doing it for your leader grips, or your red snappers, you, you do need to leave enough, enough space for your bar to go through it. Okay, now that you are fully clipped at your stitch line, you don't have to be so straight with the stitching going all the way across. It's gonna be a little bit harder to maneuver, but you definitely wanna make sure your clamps are on both sides and you're going to stitch all the way across your leader. Just to secure that fold line. So once I get my leaders sewn all the way across, I'll just roll them back up on the bar and I kind of do like a check. And they are pretty much on the same, ending at the same spot. Sorry, let me just focus in here. You can see that they're pretty much on the same spot. As you go. Don't worry about that. It's then when I had to stitch it, I had to avoid some, avoid the, avoiding the plastic. So just as long as it's stitched across, that's all you need. I don't know, I already remarked my centers. I told you before that you can do it before you unhook and start sewing your casings. Um, since I already knew it was kind of going back to my original spot, I had pretty much already marked it. So then I just remarked it and then I made sure it matched my top because I pinned my tops and I marked that one with a blue though because that one was more in line to that that leader okay so now I'm going to go and stitch across for the back roller right now and after I do that I'll roll it up I'll check it see how it lays and I will be done take a, a good bit of time to do this so Make sure you dedicate that time in your day to try to get this all done. Don't worry about the stitch line back here. Um, if you're putting leader grips on, you might want to partner and then you would just put your channel locks on to try to get that casing just right for your, your bars to go in. But I don't use leader grips and I just wanted to have a nice straight edge. And I kind of compare it to my roller and I'm going all the way across and I can see that it's hitting where I need it to be pretty much all the way across okay so it looks pretty good in the back in the front it looks pretty good it's all coming to all laying where I want it to lay when I pull it it's all kind of just laying right at the top of this bar all the way across so I'm liking that that part at least and then um, I've marked my marks now I did that when I had them clipped remember I said uh, that it looked like it was going back to my original mark you can do that so I took off my old blue it was a this blue is water soluble 
and I just remarked it and then I went to my top leader took off the old you can still see room in there and then I met, put it to my bottom one and had kind of wrapped it over see where it was lining up and then I I then marked the top of that but the most important thing is that this one and that back one are at the same spot doesn't matter what inch it is, it just has to meet, you know, from left to right, trying to find the center. As long as you have this mark and that mark back here at the same spot, that's the most important thing for your, um, for your back, putting your back, loading your backing up on there. So it all looks pretty good. If you do find that after you've done this and you're still finding like a, this side is like, really dipping over you may want to redo it unfortunately and just i think the problem would be there is that after you pin them there's just so much sag on the side just make sure that you manually um when you start when you start that stitching that you've made it taut manually you might need a helper to get the, the sag so it's going to be a lot of stretched fabric that needs to be pulled and then fold it over so you would just need to um, get it taut and maybe have someone hold it and clip it just so it's taut all the way across there and then do your stitch line and then fold it over um, I didn't have too much of a sag so it was a little bit but it was enough that I could manage it on my own when I was going across when I got to that end part that was really saggy I was able to kind of hold on to it and give it a, so that it could stitch straight and then I could fold it over. So you'll see that, um, like for example, if you looked at my center, how much it's folded over here versus when you come down over here, there's a lot more that folded over on this side because this had, this part had stretched out. So that's just something you want to think about as you're doing it. And then hopefully it helps. And if it's really out of whack, um, you could try um, getting either new ones or you could take them off and just do it at your own sewing machine. That would probably be the most intense way to do it. But if there's a lot of sag, that might be the best. So that's just some ideas. Have a wonderful day. Happy New Year.